can't even relate to this guy. These other moments where he's talking like that, you, you just go, I completely identify with you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was gonna also say, not being too sentimental. Not like being finding in the in, yeah. finding the center there, and I think that that. Those moments where he talks about that stuff, it totally made me think about my own life, too. It, it definitely made me think about, like, my own desires to do those things and that if somebody else sat and, and, and filmed my life for a couple of months or whatever of my endeavors of playing music or trying to write or fucking podcast or whatever, <laughs> that somebody else might look at that. And in those moments, that's what overall makes the movie so powerful is that it makes you, maybe not for everybody, but at least for me and obviously like you said, for you too, think about your own life. And, and, and that makes these people into real characters, you know? And, and, and one of the most powerful of those kinds of characters is his uncle. Uh, yes, Bob, right? Yeah. Is it, uh, Bob, Bill, oh, Bill, Bill. Uncle Bill, Uncle yeah. Bill. I, wanna, I have like a list of a couple of different characters. Uncle Bill, Bill in yeah. particular, who yeah. he gets the money from to... to yeah. Originally, the money, it was three grand, and it's supposed to fund uh, Northwestern. And then after he switches it up to try and finish Coven, yeah. you know, and, and his uncle doesn't... His uncle is, is so old and decrepit. He's and, just this, and, this stereotypical... You know, old man is just like, oh, I don't know, just grouchy, you know, can type. Yeah, this. and like, yeah. like an al- alcoholic, and 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 you know, very obviously uh, has from the way that he led his life more significant problems than probably he should have for the age that he's at. You know what I mean? Like he's, I mean, there's a scene where Mark is bathing him. I yeah, mean, that's. It's, I mean, that's really that's really touching. It really is. Him. I mean, and also, you know, he's. Uh, his uncle Bill is like reading this poem he wrote about his wife oh that God, died. It's so it's fucking sad. sad. Oh, oh my God. God, it really is. It, it just affects you so much, and it just makes you. Yeah, it's like there's there's these beautiful moments in there, and there's parts where you really kind of get mad at Mark because you feel like he is kind of taking advantage of his uncle for this money at times. But, but he really be- he really believes that it's gonna. That he's going to get his money back. Yeah. All this stuff, yeah. And th- yeah. those make it these really tragic, like, beautiful little moments of that. And and like that, with the bathing scene, you realize how much Mark truly loves him. And it, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot of layers in this movie. But I think, you know, we're talking about this. We're doing, we're doing uh, the awkward podcast. Uh, and, you know, this was definitely one of those movies. And I think that those performances of these people... I mean, yes, it is a documentary, but... I mean, you have to think that Chris Smith, while he was filming this, had probably so many moments where he was just going, thank you, God, for some of the stuff he was able to get on film. Like these moments with Mike, my, uh, Mark's buddy. Mike, yeah, I wanted to talk about Mike. Those are the two main ones, Bill and Mike. I mean, <laughs> fuck. You can't, like you are saying, all the stoner movies yeah. that you've seen... Think of You've all of them. Never <laughs> seen Mike in any of these stoner movies. You've fucking never seen him because he is just like, and he doesn't do drugs anymore. I mean, he he and he doesn't drink anymore. He's clean. Oh, like, doesn't he drink in the movie? I think uh, he drinks once, I think. But he he is in AA. And but, he has like a, has a sponsor he has and everything. A scratch but, off problem. Yeah, he, yeah. Now he now he gambles. Now he he plays the lotto. Yeah, and it's like that part where he fucking where Mike tells the story about being in the hospital. With the oh acid God. and all oh of that. God. And he's like, I wanted to drop my last three hits of acid while I was in the hospital, but my mom had the bag, and so I couldn't drop it anymore. And they, the doctor said I was the worst case they'd ever seen. You know? And you're just like, dude, who the fuck is this guy? And there's, and you know, and Mark's asking him, yes, like, so do you know how to, how to frame a scene with the camera? He's like, yeah, I mean, I think I could probably figure it out. You know? He's, he's, like, just he's like, got that stone. He's got that stoner voice, and I was in the and we, were, and we, were <laughs> we were drinking vodka, vodka. and so we got the that vodka. Midwestern yeah. Vo- vodka. <laughs> vodka. Yeah, it's, it's once again like you cannot. And fake so just these this people. hilarious shit. Like they're out staging this scene, and they're all like these. Like um, druid, where these druid kind of costumes, yeah. and he, and Mark says, "Make sure everyone has brown gloves." And Mark <laughs> so, and Mike just yells out, "Everyone have brown gloves!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? It is all these times when Mark will tell someone he's just frustrated. He's trying to convince Bill, or you know, trying to get his mom to frame a scene, and someone will just this stupid shit and it'll be like you can just see him just hitting his head just like fuck yeah like oh i'm just working with fucking totally amateurs you know <laughs> like yeah like he's this big yeah totally <laughs> dude one of the best and it happens early in the, in the movie 
and it's in the trailer, but it, it's one of the best scenes that I think explains more than anything kind of what I was saying in the beginning of that he has this passion, he has this drive, but he hasn't gone the right route to know the stuff he should probably know, is where he's doing the, you know, two two hands up yeah, and making the box, up. and he's yeah. framing the scene, and he's, yeah. like, explaining what's going to be in the shot, and then he said he stops, and he's, like, and I've scouted out locations, so when I put my hands like this, I, I picture what's going to be in between there. And you're like, oh, Jesus, man. Like, you just want to hold your head. But like, they're these small-town people that, like, kind of, um, they need that almost. They do, yeah. People gravitate towards him. I mean, you think about how long he's been making these movies, and people still are showing up for his casting calls. They are still coming to be in his movies. And we need to talk about the scene. We need to, And you mentioned okay. it a little bit before, but we need to talk about... <laughs> which I think is a great this scene is a great analogy for what Mark's life is like where they're trying he's trying to get the guy's head to break the cabinet door oh god yeah I want to and they go that one over this and they've they've taken a saw and scored the back of it so it'll <laughs> break easier yeah. and this poor guy that's in the scene isn't is that like Tom Schimmel isn't it I think, yeah, yeah I think that is Tom Schimmel I think you're right for and, you yeah, yeah Tom yeah, Schimmel for, for fans the, out yeah there. for all <laughs> <laughs> who saw him in storytelling and everything else. He has, like, he has storytelling, uh, Coven, and, like, one other movie on his IMDb credit. But, but yeah, and, and, and Tom Schimmel is this, like, middle-aged, gray-haired, pretty normal-looking dude, and Mark is, like, thrusting his head into this cabinet over and over again. They keep doing these takes of it, and you can see Mark's hand... And it's starting to get actually, like, they have fake blood ready for the scene. Yeah. But his head is actually getting red and bloodied yeah. by trying to smack <laughs> this dude's head. So you can only imagine how this guy's head feels. And it's like, they keep going over it until they've eventually, like, and he starts punching it. And they still can't break it. And so he has to actually go back. <laughs> and they saw it more until you can just tell that it's broken. <laughs> and it is just, like, the most... And then after all of that, once he has him there and they've broken through it, and they put all the fake blood on him, now he wants his hands, his fingers twitching. Yeah, twitching, that's... right? <laughs> like, nerve endings. I want to see you twitch, twitching. And you're just like... He's such... Yeah. The, oh, God. The director, yeah. I mean, don't you... There's those moments where it's like, I've never made a movie. You've never made a movie. But don't you just wish you could, like, reach through the, the screen and be like, dude, don't do that. That looks really cheesy. Like... <laughs> You know, I know you love making movies. I know you love movies, but let me help you, you know? Like, it, it's just so painful because... And it reminds me of that... Uh, I mentioned it a million times. It reminds me of, of the character of Salieri and Amadeus, where yeah. he has that passion for music, but he's pretty good. And it's so... You know? So identifiable that you you're trying to do some like you said trying to do some kind of artistic pursuit and you'll never be metallica or you'll never be Jimi hendrix or whoever i mean right. even you might have some degree of success but there's always you're always to some degree sell gary to somebody else yeah there's that know? tier there's above that. what you can do yeah no matter what and that that's you know it's interesting and, and and it's a little bit of a tangent but i saw an awesome thing online a couple of weeks ago that was uh, ira glass from this american life mm -hmm. And he was, uh, I, I guess he did a piece for uh, uh, young radio producers. Uh, some school asked him to sort of do this, uh, sort of talk about uh, doing radio production. And he was saying that, uh, he said the most amazing thing, and he said it in this way that I think I've always known this was true, but I, I wish someone would have told me this when I was younger. He said, you want to make art because you have really good taste. He's like, you have really good taste in things. You love huh. stuff that's really cool. So that, in turn, makes you want to do stuff. He's like, but once you start doing something, he's like, what your ability is to do that thing, whether it's art yeah. or music or whatever, yeah, right. is not very good because you're just starting out. But your taste is still really good. Oh, God. So that you don't, you, you, you get discouraged at yourself because you're like, what I'm doing kind of sucks. And he's like, it's, it's because you're just starting out. And he's like, your taste is still as good as it ever was. So that's why you think what you like do kind of sucks. Like when I started playing guitar, I wanted to play like Alex Lifeson, which is maybe not quite that good of taste. but have that taste, and then you have what you're able to produce. And he's like, it yeah. takes years before that gap is closed. And yeah. that your, ta your tastes, your, the, what you're able to do finally matches up with your taste. And that's right? why we invented punk rock. <laughs>